Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shinam Bansal. Today we will do idiopathic chondrolysis of the hip. See, in idiopathic chondrolysis of the hip, patient will come to you with main complaint of limp while walking. There will be restriction of movements at the hip joint and there will be progressive pain. It may be of short duration and long duration. According to duration, we have classified it in the four stages. That is, in the stage one, there will be duration of less than three months. And in this, there will be less than three centimeter of defect. And in the second stage, there will be duration three to nine months. And there will be more than three centimeter of defect, humoral head defect that will need osteochondroplasty. And in the stage three and four, we have duration of more than nine months. And in the third stage, but in now what is the difference between stage three and four? In the stage three, we have remodeling, we see remodeling. And in the stage four, we see fortusio acetabuli. And in the pathology, what will we see? In the pathology, we see cartilage necrosis and there is chronic inflammation with infiltration of lipocytes around it. Radiologically, if we see, there will be more than 50% reduction of joint space and there will be, or there will be less than three millimeter of space. Radiologically, we have classified into four stages, zero, one, two, and three. In the first stage, that is zero stage, there is there are no changes on the X-ray. In the stage one, it will appear in the T1 image, hypo-intense, and in the T2, it will appear hyper-intense. And in the stage two, we will see acetabular, acetabular edema, acetabular changes. And in the stage four, stage three, we will see the, there will be osteoarthritis, there will be potential acetabular. And now on examination, we will see flexion, abduction, external patient deformity, and there will be hyperlodosis due to the flexion deformity, and there may be pelvic tilt. Then how can we treat it? We can, in the initial stages, we can treat uh, it by, with the conservative treatment. Like we can see uh, anti-inflammatory drugs and uh, we can also give etanercept, methotrexate or steroids. And in uh, further stages, we, we can distract the joint. We can distract the joint by applying distractor and then uh, we can distract it. And we can also do capsulotomy. In the, uh, if there is more femoral head defect, then we will have to do the osteochondroplasty. Initially, um, it has been seen, there is no cause uh, behind it, but it has been seen that it occurs more in females and adolescent females, although it can occur in adults also. It, it mainly involves a hip joint, although it can involve shoulder, knee, ankle, etc. And it occurs mainly unilateral, that is right side only. 5% cases are seen bilateral. Firstly, it will, it will involve the femoral side and superficial part. And that is the weight bearing portion. Then it will involve a periphery and then it will involve the acetabular side. Now, what um, that uh, we have talked about the idiopathic chondrolysis of the hip. Now, uh, con there are many other causes of chondrolysis of it. Like uh, we can see uh, it, uh, it also in the cases of TB. In TB also there is uh, osteopenia, periarticular osteopenia. In um, chondrolysis, idiopathic chondrolysis also there is periarticular osteopenia. So we have to get done uh, some uh, investigations. It can also be, chondrolysis can also be seen in TB, post SCFE treatment can also be seen in septic arthritis. It can also be seen in uh, juvenile idiopathic arthritis. So we should get some investigations done to conclude that it is idiopathic. Firstly, we have to uh, get done the 
CBC per file, HLA B27, ANA. Uh, we have to get done these X. It, it can also be due to uh, PVNN, that is pigmented below nodular, nodular synovitis. So there are many other causes. So it was all about uh, idiopathic chondrolysis of fifth. Thank you so much.